The Western public opinion on palm oil are highly orchestrated to create a state of fear, fear of an unknown, even invisible commodity produced in an unfamiliar corner of the world that many have never stepped upon. Regardless of whether that fear is justified or not, it comes from woefully inadequate and asymmetric information. This is illustrated in a study by the Nobel laureate George Akloff back in the 1970s. In his paper titled The Market for Lemons, he demonstrated how different information that seller and buyer possess led to decision ending in undesirable market outcomes. Say that you are trying to buy a used car. The information that you and the seller possess are asymmetric, meaning that the seller have more information about the product that they are selling, the quality, the average price, the history of the previous owner and so on. Meanwhile, you as the buyer, your information may be limited to the average price of the car sold in the market. So your buying decision is highly affected by the price. In this market condition, seller with a different used car with a more expensive price tag would suffer because they will find it difficult to sell their more expensive product despite the promise of better quality. The same goes to the story of palm oil. Palm oil is alternatively seen as a gift from God or a crime against humanity. But according to science, it is neither. Palm oil is neither the devil's work nor a godsend to humanity. Its effect on its surrounding largely depends on key specific circumstances. Those who ask to boycott all palm oil due to its contribution to deforestation should also consider boycotting coffee, soybeans and livestock if they wish to be consistent. In March 2019, the European Parliament banned the use of palm oil in favour to alternative crops like soybean and canola that are grown in Europe. If European Parliament is being sincere about their concern of deforestation, perhaps they should ban wine productions, cheese making and livestock too. But why would they do that? Simply use environmental excuse as a scapegoat so that you would be seen more smart. Ask anyone who has kept half an eye on the news for the last couple of years and they will most likely say against obviously. The plantation destroyed orangutan habitats, right? We've all seen the videos. The environmental impact of the palm oil industry are widely recognized. Unsurprisingly, many people, including many conservative pundits, consider oil palm a major evil. What is less widely recognized is the extent to which this industry has benefited people. Palm oil yields the highest amount of vegetable oil per acre of land compared to all other oil crops. The usage is not only limited to edible oil but can also be used as biofuel. Oil palm development, if well planned and managed, can provide improved income and employment. Some of the well planned and managed plantations are the malicious Felda and Filcra. They perform sustainable development for the plantation as well as towards the surrounding flora and fauna. These alternative viewpoints fuel a polarized debate in which oil palm is alternatively seen as a gift from God or a crime against humanity. According to science, though, it is neither. Two leading scientists on forest conservation and management call for a more nuanced debate when it comes to palm oil and their plantation. Our key message is the following, the effect of oil palm on environment and on human society are key specific and largely dependent on circumstances. This must be recognized when conducting debate and making management and consumer decisions. Professor Douglas Shield from the Norwegian University of Life Sciences says, in a new scientific article, he and collaborator Professor Eric Mayhart from the University of Queensland, Australia and University of Kent, United Kingdom, explore questions related to the production and the use of palm oil. Between them, they have more than 50 years of research experience on tropical forest conservation. Is this the only cause of deforestation? Oil palm is widely revealed for causing large-scale deforestation in the species-rich tropics. Despite cremating 18.7 million hectares of industrial-scale palm oil plantation in 2017, it is only ranked fourth in terms of the planted area for an oil crop, way behind soybean, canola, and maize. Currently, oil palm produces about 35% of the global vegetable oil on less than 10% of the total area under oil crops. Overall, conversion to industrial-scale oil palm development appears associated with less than 0.5% of global deforestation. Locally, it can be environmentally devastating, but on a global scale, 0.5% is not much considering some cities were built exactly on forests, in which that forest is supposedly gone by now. 
bananas, beef, sugar cane, chocolate, coconut, coffee, pineapple, soybean, tea and vanilla to name a few are all produced in previously forested areas. But the intention this receive is hardly comparable to the scrutiny that is directed toward palm oil. Why is that so? When inaccurate information is publicly publicized, there must be a force behind it. Hmm, I wonder what is that? There is no doubt that the impact of all palm plantings on the environment and biodiversity at the local scale can be summed up as highly negative, she says. But in terms of global outcome, the debate changes. It is imperative to assess to what extent the negative impact can be reduced or avoided. For example, by planting palm oil or other crop for that matter. In areas that are deforested already, it is better to utilize already degraded areas than cutting down new ones. This is already being done, it is just not widely acknowledged but needs to be encouraged. Another element that is insufficiently recognized is that the negative consequences of the expansion of palm oil plantation in one location are potentially offset by, for example, reduced expansion of other oil crops elsewhere. When the EU banned palm oil, it definitely led to an increase in other deforestation elsewhere to produce substitute oil. Who would deny a parent the opportunity of feeding their starving children? For example, palm oil is a way out of poverty when few other options exist. And economically, it is often a sensible option. Oil palm will grow in conditions that would defeat most other crops and decades of successful breeding has increased yield dramatically. Regardless of measure, land, labor and input invested, oil palm is exceptionally profitable crop, Mayhart says. However, palm oil is tainted with stories of corruption and disreputable practices. Its ability to produce considerable profit even from areas where comparable options were absent has fueled a boom in speculation, opportunism and dubious practices. In location with weak or corrupt institution, this has parallels to the resource curse seen in some other high-value commodities such as mineral oil. The immediate benefit of land clearance to develop oil palm can also be highly profitable encouraging some unsculptured investors to access and clear large areas for the timber value on the promise of longer-term oil palm development that never appear. Such scams have been common across Indonesia in recent decades, with both officials and communities duped into giving away their forest and timber for a broken promise, Mayhart says. The world demands vegetable oil and if palm oil is not available, other crops will definitely replace it. Do you know who profit in this change? Definitely, the crops produced in the west and other parts of the world. A call for reduction in palm oil production will require an increase in other higher latitude oil crops like soybeans, maize, sunflower and canola, Mihat says. The largest areas allocated for the production of vegetable oil are in the United States, China and Brazil. But why Malaysia and Indonesia were singled out? A global shift away from palm oil would require more production of other vegetable oil, in which in this case would lead to another deforestation elsewhere. This would most likely benefit economies in the global north, where deforestation for agriculture took place a lot earlier than in the tropics. Boycotts against palm oil by consumers and consuming countries are a legitimate expression of social and environmental concern. Banning palm oil rather than seeking improved standard risk lowering rather than raising the practices. If similar standards are not addressed to other crops and commodities, including those produced in the consuming countries themselves, such boycott can appear political, prejudice and protectionist. We are already seeing palm oil producing countries like Malaysia and Indonesia protesting against what they see as Western double standards. Stepping outside this rhetorical extremism is necessary if we seek resolution and pragmatic advances. An important question is how to plan, guide and assess all palm development to foster the greatest benefit and least harm. What is right and what is wrong depends on who you ask and it is unlikely that there is a clear universal answer as to how to best tackle contemporary global problems in a just and equitable manner apart from providing informed choices. We have to bring back nuance back into the debate 